Okay, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, fundamental principle of counting and try to illustrate it with just some basic uh, introductory type of examples. Let's say, for example, that we have a task to do, what is called task T1, and say that to do this task, maybe there's m different ways of doing it. And we have another task, say T2, and for this one, say there are n ways of doing it. Well, if we're going to proceed and say we're going to perform task T1 first, then perform task T2, the number of ways we can go about this is m times n. So it's a simple enough concept. But it's a very important one, and it's going to come up time and time again as we get into more uh, complicated permutation and uh, combination problems. But to illustrate it, let's say, for example, that there's a town, we'll call it Town A, and three roads connect Town A. Town B. And then there are two roads. I don't make my R's very good, so let's make these capital R's. Then there are two roads, say, that connect Town B to Town C. So, if we travel from town A to town C via town B, how many different ways can we do it? And this is obviously a simple example, but even in the simplest problems, it's helpful if you can do it to draw a diagram. So, let's just say here is town A, and here is town B, and there are three roads that lead from town A to town B. And then to go from town B to town C, there are two roads. So, we can think of it as task T1 is to go from town A to town B. That's T1. And then task T2 is to go from town B to town C. And the number of ways that we can perform task T1, of course, is 3. The number of ways that we can perform task T2 is 2. So if we perform this one, then perform this one, the total number of ways that we can do it the six different ways, which we can see very easily from our diagram here. So that's just a real simple example uh, of how the fundamental principle of counting works. Now, sometimes when you get involved in these types of problems, and especially with uh, uh, probability work, they ask you to draw a sample space. And we can do that. That's simple enough. Here it would be Here's town A, the three roads leading to town B, and then here is town C, and from town B, there are two roads that lead to town C, illustrated here, here, and here. So if we label the roads here, one, two, three, and label each of the roads going out of town B as A and B, like this, then we can see that the different routes, if you will, going from town A to town C, it could be 1A, or 1B, or it could be 2A, or 2B, or it could be 3A, or 3B. So this would be the sample space here for our simple kind of problem. Um, Let's consider another simple problem. Suppose that we have a coin, and 
say we toss it up into the air three different times. And each result that we have, either being heads or tails, of course, we record the result each time, and we ask ourselves, how many different outcomes can we possibly have? So, again, we can think of it as task T1, That's just the first flip. Task T2. That should be the second flip. And then task T3, obviously, is just the third flip. Now, each time we flip a coin, obviously it's going to come out either heads or tails. So the number of ways that we can form the, the first task is two different ways. Same thing for the second. Same thing for the third. So if we perform task one, then sequentially task two, and then task three, each way the time there's two different ways to do it. So there's going to be a total then of eight possible different outcomes when we flip the coin two different times. And as in the previous problem, we can draw a sample space for this to try to illustrate this better for you. And it would look something like this. We're here, you can imagine we have a coin, and we're doing a coin toss. So the first toss could be either heads or tails. So there's our task T1. Then the second coin toss could also give us heads or tails. Then the third toss of the coin that is in here, that too can give us heads or tails. So, if we follow our diagram then, the different types of results that we can have, the eight different results, would look something like this. The first one would just be heads, heads, heads. Or we could have heads, heads, tails. Or we could have heads, tails, heads. Or we could have heads, tails, tails. Or we could have tails, head, head, or we could have tails, head, tails, or we could have tails, tails, head, or tails, tails, tails. So those are the eight results then that we can expect to find when we cross a, toss a coin, either taking heads or tails as a possibility. Those are the possibilities there. Let's just consider another simple kind of example. We're moving along fast because these are pretty basic examples here. Let's say that you're taking a test, and on the test is 10 questions. And each question can be answered true or false. So, what are the total number of ways that we have that those questions could be answered when you're taking your test? So, for each time you are posed with a question, you can obviously have two or false. So, each question, test T1, T2, T3, going on now to T10, each one of course can perform two different ways. So for the number of outcomes, it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2, like this, which will give us 2 to the 10th. And that would be 1,024 different ways of how you could, different variations of performing the test. Now, for example, though, to make this more complicated, let's say that some of the students left some of the questions unanswered. Then how many different ways can this task be performed? So that means that when for each question you have to consider it might be marked true, 
it might be marked false, or it just simply might be unanswered. So now we have three possibilities to consider for each question. And again, we still have ten questions. That doesn't change. So in this case, we would have not two times two times two, but we are going to have three times three times three all the way on out to three to the tenth. Or in this case, then, there would be, I think that comes out to like 59,049. So though in this instance, that would then be the number of different ways that the test could be performed. So just considering the possibility of sort of true or false, that gave us just a little over a thousand possibilities. Now consider either true, false, or unanswered, and that dramatically increases it all the way to just over 59,000 possibilities. But Okay, that's it for this video. We just wanted to do some basic, simple demonstrations um, of how the uh, counting principle works. We're going to show you in the next video now how the counting principle will lead us into factorials. So come back and join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion.